This is the first video in a series I'm making about how to prepare for death. Death is pretty much the only thing we can be assured of in life, but still it is a big problem for many to deal with it, both their own death and the death of loved ones. One of the reasons that it is so difficult for us to uh, get to grips with this subject is the amount of fear it inspires. Fear itself is very useful. If we wouldn't have fear of death, we wouldn't be as careful as we are. And yeah, we wouldn't, we would take more risks. So fear has a very useful and functional aspect. Uh, but fear itself can also become a problem. So it is important that we learn to manage our fears in general and fear of death in particular, because many other fears are in a way rooted in our fear of death. And once we stop being afraid of death itself, then all the other fears, which are in a way, yeah, minor compared to the fear of death, are also becoming less powerful, less significant in our lives. We can respond to a fear in uh, several ways. One of the usual ways in which we respond in the West, uh, as we do to all things which we dislike, is try to repress it, to deny it, in a way to amputate that part of ourselves. And this is a good short-term solution because then you don't have to deal with something you're ill-equipped to, to deal with. So uh, denial, amputation, rejecting, uh, just dumping it out of your thoughts, out of your system, um, tends to work well on the short term. But on the long term, all these parts which we, in a way, um, yeah, stop integrating in ourselves, stop growing and transforming, but just put somewhere on the back burner, uh, there are parts of our energy bodies which are, in a way, uncontrolled by us and start working through our subconscious but also start being influenced by other energies. We are not protecting them, they're not part of our consciousness and therefore we do not notice if there are other influences such as spirits which are working on them. So while denial is a, short, a good short-term strategy, on the long term it actually carries a lot of risks. And yeah, denying death is kind of futile because some problems go away if you just ignore them. Um, but other problems, they don't go away. And death is unfortunately one of them. So ultimately we have to get to grips with it and deal with it. In dealing with a problem, there are basically two steps we take. One is understanding it and two is trying to control it. Um, Control in case of death is ultimately not possible because we will all die no matter what we do. But by understanding the process, uh, we can influence the process of our experience of dying, what happened during that process of dying. Part of it is in a way unavoidable, just like uh, laws of nature are unavoidable. Um, gravity exists, electricity exists, magnetism exists heat exists, we cannot choose for them not to exist. And in the same way death and a lot of processes which yeah, are associated with death, which is basically the process of entropy, which works on both the physical body but also on the energy body, is yeah going to happen. But understanding it gives us some measure of control over how that process will manifest itself. In the same way we cannot un make electricity, it just exists, but we can learn how to control it by understanding it. So in the same way, by understanding the process of death, um, we are able to manipulate it. And we have been manipulating it for thousands of years through our consciousness, through our burial rituals, to our mourning rituals. But modern man has forgotten a lot of that knowledge and as a result we are less well equipped to deal with death as we used to be in previous generations. So, in, before we get started on the other videos I would like to deal with a little bit of terminology uh, so we don't get confused. 
um, with the body, I mean basically our physical body and also the energetical part of our physical body. With the energy body, I mean basically the part of our, uh, our being which is non-corporeal, so it's a very inclusive term, the energy body. And a part of the energy body I call the spirit. And the spirit is the part of the energy body which is not connected to the physical body but can move out of the physical body and can move between incarnations. So even though the spirit, the physical body will yeah, at some point die and part of the energy body will also die, the spirit lives on and continues. But the spirit is also not a constant. It can change a lot between incarnations. But there is a part of us which remains the same between incarnations. Uh, even though the incarnations might be radically different, even if I would incarnate into a chicken, uh, the spirit would be very different um, because the structure and the consciousness of the chicken is different from a human. Um, but one part of our being, what I would call the soul, is more eternal or everlasting and so it is kind of a nested structure. So we have the body and part of this is the energy body, which is partly inside and confined to the body, but also partly separate from it. Then we have the spirit, then the soul. So this is the kind of terminology I will be using. Um, some parts of the uh, energy body which are significant are the aura. Um, the meridians and the chakras and uh, most of those structures are in a way limited also to the physical part of the energy body. So an aura exists around living beings and uh, other objects can also have an energy so you can also feel kind of an aura around them but it is not of the same kind of intensity and quality and uh, magnitude typically as that of a living being but certain uh, structures can be charged with energy and that energy will also be like a magnetic field around it so even objects can have a semblance of an aura. Um, our chakra structure is very much linked to our physical bodies so if I would incarnate in a different body I would become a cat or a dolphin would have a very different chakra structure and the chakra structure reflects the personality structure. So we're not born with a complete personality but our personality grows and evolves as we age. So when we're born we only have the lower chakras but the higher chakras become more and more significant and developed as our consciousness increases and our personality becomes more complex. But different animals uh, do this in different ways. So they build very different chakra structures. Uh, meridians are also something which are confined to, uh, to living beings. Uh, in a way the earth also has meridians which can be called ley lines or other earth energy lines like uh, Hartmann lines. But yeah for usual purposes people tend to identify more with things they consider to be living rather than the earth which is in a way also living but in a different way than we are. So besides our spirit there are also other spirits which may or may not be embodied and it's important to realize that if a spirit doesn't have a physical body it in a way has less than uh, an incarnated being. So there's no need to be afraid of spirits because we ourselves are spirits but we have extra power, extra protections, we have more powerful aura, more stable personality structure, uh, we have meridians, we can transform energies, we can do a, a lot more than a being which is only a spirit can do. So there's no reason to be afraid of spirits even though they can influence us but we can also influence them and um, as long as we are aware of them um, they do not have an edge over us. Okay this is the short preamble. Um, 
the rest of the videos will be according to topic and I hope you will keep watching.